Long, long ago, a wa heiny bark, there lived a princess, and her name was Marigold. And Marigold was very, very beautiful. Her father thought she'd came to an age when she should have taken a husband. So her father said to her, Marigold, I would like you to take a husband so we can have an heir to the throne. And she says, well, she says, I would like to pick my own husband. He says, no, no, he says, royalty always picks for their family. So he picked a prince, and he was then off a bonny-looking lad, but he was very, very wealthy. But Marigold didn't want to take this prince. And so she says, look, I'm not very happy about this. So... In the town where she lived, she left her castle and she went out to see an old spy wife. And this old spy wife had great power of magic and wisdom. And she had a scabby heeded doctor who used to wear clutes through her hair because she had an awful clot of heed. And she bed with her scabby heeded doctor. Now the princess went down to visit this spy wife. And she tells the spy wife, she says, My father wants me to marry a prince who I've not even the slightest thing I love for. And so the old woman says, Well, what to do, lass, is tell your father to make you a coat made of the beaten gold. Are you going to attack him? So she comes back and she says to her father, I want to attack that prince until you give him a coat made of the beaten gold. And her father immediately sent all these goldsmiths to get the finest sheet gold and make a beautiful coat for her out of the beaten gold. And about two or three weeks' time, she had this beautiful gold coat. But she still didn't want to take a sprints. So she went back to the old spy wife again and says, Look, my father gave me the coat of gold like you asked for. She said, Well, go and tell your father to mark you a coat made of Every feathers of all the birds she can get. So she comes back and she says to her father, Look, I would like a coat made of all the birds' feathers she can find. And so the father went to his wise men, and the wise men said, Well, what to do is prepare a great feast in your garden, put it at a table, and allow every bird to come down and eat for this feast, but tell them they must leave a tail feather. And right enough, this is done, and in that time, the man gets eyes, seamstresses, to sew all these feathers together, and she got a beautiful coat made of all the feathers of the different birds. So she came back again, and she says to the spy wife, Look, I got the coat made of feathers. She says, Well, this thing, go back and tell your father, you want a coat made of reeds and rushes, and to give you slippers and a hat made of other reeds and rushes. So she comes back and she says to her father, I'll only talk at Prince if you give me another coat made of all the reeds and rushes, a pair of slippers and a hat to go with it. So the father ordered his men to go and cut all the reeds and rushes and they moulded her feet so the shoes would fit perfectly. They moulded a coat so it was perfect fit and the same with the hat. And she got it. She still didn't want to take a Prince. So she went back to the old spy wife and she says, Look, I got a coat made of the reeds and rushes and the hat and the slipper. She says, Well, lost, there's no mare I can do for you. The only thing can do, you either marry the prince or you gang a to the next land. So she went home and she packed up her three coats and her slippers and other and she left through the reed seals the night and she walk it and walk it and walk it till she came to the neighbouring kingdom. And when she comes into the neighbouring kingdom, she's got no house, home, no habitation, no money, no food. So she sees a big castle, and she goes up to the castle, she knocks at the gates of the castle, and out come a butler. And the butler says, what do you want, Classy? She said, well, Oxley said, I'm looking for a job, she says. I don't know any house, home, or habitation. And he says, well, he says, can you cook? She says, well, no, really. I hadn't done much work before. It's neither kind of work I do, but, but I'm willing to get a try. He says, you see, the cook's looking for an assistant cook to come and help them. So he gets introduced to the cook, and the lassie gets told what her duties would be. And so she takes the job. 
So she's either doing in the kitchen. She never sees nothing past the kitchen. No, she's never worked in her life before, but she's enjoying. She's enjoying working. And she becomes a very, very good assistant cook. And she helped to cook all the time. And the very royal family that lived in this castle said, we're getting an awful lot of nice dishes and all that. And says, there must be some new cook in the castle. And it come to be the one day was a Sunday and all the royal family went about to the kirk. Except the cooks were working to mark the big Sunday dinners. And the cook says, Marigold, he says, eh, do you think it'd be all right if I went to the kirk? I hadn't been to kirk for a long, long time. Would you be able to sort the dinner? And she says, of course, you can have what the kirk cook and I'll mark the dinner. And just, I can't remember do you know. And so the cook brings her back to the kirk. And the cook's no sooner a back to the kirk. For a wee fairy man comes in. And he says, Marigold, he says, why are you near about to the kirk? She says, well, I've got to cook a dinner. He says, no, no, he says, Lassie, look, I have all the power of magic. You go about to the kirk and put on your golden coat and I'll mark a dinner. So I think it'll be beautiful when you come back. So the lassie goes and she puts on her golden coat and the moment she goes out the door, the wee fairy man says, spit, spit, turn, turn, bannock, bannock, burn, burn. And now the food starts cooking itself really beautifully. Now, when Marigold goes out, the sun catches us beautiful sunbeams in the coat. And now these beautiful sunbeams come flying off. Very, very radiant and very, very beautiful. But when she comes to the church, she's late. So when she opens the doors, the moment she opens the door, suddenly, all these sunbeams going all around the church. And I'll be stern and ruin. And a young prince that's there looks through and he sees his beautiful girl in his beautiful, beautiful golden coat. And he says to his friend, What lassie is that? And he says, Well, I've never seen her before. I would have taken notice if I'd seen her before. She said, but she's very, very pretty. And so, whenever the service is over and the minister says, Amen, out she flies and runs away home. So, when she comes home, the food's ready. And the royal family are saying, Far was that bonny, bonny girl. It was in the church. Nobody cares where she was. Nobody saw her before. She, she looked like a princess, honestly. She was in that coat of beaten gold, so she must see a lot of money. Now, the following Sunday, the cook says, I'm going to go out to the church. Would you look after the dinner? She says, certainly. In a moment, he comes about, the wee fairy man comes in and says, Marigold, why are you near about to the kirk? because after all you should be going to the kirk. And this time, put on your coat made of all the feathers. And so she goes and she puts on her coat made of all the feathers, and away she goes. And the wee fairy man says, Spit, spit, turn, turn, bannock, bannock, burn, burn. And all the food starts cooking itself. And as Marigold walks along the road, she's almost flying because ah, there's wee ruffling feathers and there's wee wee bits of feathers flying all over the place. So she's late in coming into church, but the moment she opens the doors of the church, the wind catches ah, this wee feathers and ah, the folks looking at ah, this wee bits of feathers and folks are sneezing at it. And they turn round and they see this lassie and they say, there's that beautiful girl again and look at the coat she's wearing. Everybody's eyes on it. And a man says, I must find out who she is. I would like to really can't find she is at last here. But for the very minister says his prayers, she's off and she's about him. And folk are speaking about her now because she's becoming sort of like a hiss and a byword amongst the folk. The folk says, what a bonny lassie that is. And a young prince says, tell you the truth, I think I'm falling in love with that lassie. And he says, but she vanishes. We never get a chance to speak to her. So he says to his friend, next week, if she's there at the church, before the church finishes, go outside and catch her. So I'll can't find she is. So the next week, the cook says to her, Marigold, I'm about to the church. Will you be able to mark a dinner? She says, I need bother at all. So the moment the cook is about the church, out comes a wee fairy man and says, Marigold, you should be about to the church today. And I want you this time to put on your coat and your slippers and your hat made of other reeds and ashes. So she puts on all these things and off she goes to the 
to the church. And to be fair, a man says, spit, spit, turn, turn, bannock, bannock, burn, burn. And all the stuff starts cooking itself. Now, Marigold going to church, there was a bonniest, pleasant noise, a crinkly, crackly reeds. So when she comes into the church and opens the door, ah, this bonny sound of the crinkling and crackling, everybody turns round. Of course, the young prince says to his friend, no, go out to the front door and grab her when she comes out, because she goes away very, very quick. So it so happened that the minister said his prayers, and she runs out, but this fella's waiting for to catch her. So he struggles with her, but she gets a bar, but all he gets is her slipper made of reeds and rashes, and it was a bonny, bonny wee fit, because it was just moulded to every crevice in her feet. So when he comes back, he says to the prince, he says, look, I couldn't get her. But all I could get was this slipper made of reeds and rashes. And said, but the looks of it, it looks like a lonely fat, the fat it was made for. So he says, well, I'll put a proclamation out the land that any lassie, if I can fit this slipper, I will take her to be my bride. So the proclamation goes out, and all the women in the land is available try on this slipper. And it wouldn't have hit nobody because it has been moulded into every groove. But nobody bothered with Marigold because she's away doing in the kitchens, so fogged in again she exists. So after he tries, ah, the woman in the land is tried in, he says, I'll go to the bordering kingdom, which was Marigold's kingdom. So he goes over to the other kingdom and he's looking for any lassie who could fit the shoe. Eventually he comes to the old spy wife's house with a scabby heady doctor and he comes in and he says, is there any young woman here living in this house because if the shoe should fit, then she'll be my bride. But remember, the old spy wife had the power of magic. And so when her daughter be a big feet the size of a street came out and a man says, she was not born in loss and she had this clutes in her head and the beasties jumping off of her. And the man says to Lucille, well, she's naked. But just as she puts a shoe upon her, her mother-in-law puts on a spell and says, nip it fit, clip it fit, nip it fit, clip it fit. And this great big thundering fit started to slide inside the shoe and fall it off. It was torturous because a woman was in pure torture. It was wearing it. But her mother had put a spell. And then they says, oh, it's a perfect fit. And a man can't believe it. But remember, he's a prince and he's give his word. He said a lassie could wear the slipper was the one he would take. So he goes and he takes this lassie and he puts her on a horse. And his very horse is not happy because a horse is to flick its tail because it's getting eaten alive by the beasties is jumping off her. And all this clutes upon her head. And she's finding happy with her feet not happy because she's not a pain with her feet. And she's walking him with the princely Zenland. And as they're walking along, they come to a road that gets higher and higher and higher and big cliffs on the side of it. And when they're halfway through this big road, along comes a wee fairy man. And he says, tell me, prince, what you do with that scabby-headed lassie on top of your horse? He says, well, my bride was a person that could put on this shoe and he says, that's near your bride. He says, common sense would tell you. He says, that's nip it fit, clip it fit. He says, it's a spell her mother put in her fit. So he says, nip it fit, clip it fit, behind the prince rides, but small fit and bony fat behind a cauldron hides. And so he gets this little, so he puts his big fat lassie off and he gives her some money, takes off the shoe and the big feet goes bloop, back out again. So she goes here, but she wasn't worrying because she got some money in out of her troubles. So he comes back here and he tells the riddle to the wee fairy man. He says to the wee fairy man, but they said, nip it fit, clip it fit behind the prince rides, but small fit and bonny fit behind a cauldron hides. He says, well, you'll have to go somewhere where there's cauldrons. And he says, far about other cauldrons. He says, well, come down to the kitchens. That's where all the big cauldrons are for the cooking. So the fella comes down, and he's looking round. He can't see her, but he sees this big pile of huge cauldrons. 
and behind the cauldrons was marigold cleaning out these pots. So whenever he clears away the pots and he comes to marigold, he asked her to try on the slipper, but she can't. It was her own slipper. And of course, the slipper was a perfect fit. So this time, he tells her the family that he's marrying this lass, and she tells him, she says, well, but I really am a royal princess, and I live in the other kingdom next. So Marigold married a prince, but it was a prince that she'd loved. And she was very, very happy. And they had a big garuska bear, and so the old king was pleased. He'd plenty of ears for his throne and they lived happily ever after.